get started. I, there okay. we go. All right. Well, welcome, uh, welcome back, Gary, and welcome everyone else uh, to the CEO Roadshow Investor Series. We're uh, joined again, of course, by Mr. Gary Campbell, CEO of Citicorp. They're a leader in innovative technology solutions and cre creators of the revolutionary Citicoms encrypted video broadcasting technology. Their stock, of course, trades under ticker CYCA. Uh, for those of you uh, that haven't joined us before, there's a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Feel free to click on it at any time. Type your questions in. Gary will get to as many as he can at the end. So with no further ado, Gary, I will turn it over to you. Perfect. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, thanks, Mike, again, for the introduction. Um, can you switch to the next slide, please? Yeah, that didn't look like it, but there we go. Okay. So basically, uh, for those of you who don't know what we do, uh, you know, we're, we're heavily involved in all the technologies around advanced streaming and integrated communication systems. Our, our premier product right now is the Citicoms suite of products. So let's move on to the next slide, please, Mike. There you go. So Citicoms is really a, a system that we built from the ground up that was designed originally to be an incident command system, uh, something that FEMA has been asking for. Uh, it was created really out of the out of the chaos that was 9-11. The idea of various departments couldn't speak to each other. Of course, back in those days, there was no concept of being able to stream videos, share those, and uh, integrate them into all of the decision making. So really, that's what Citicoms was created to do. And right now, it's... Uh, a system that's incredibly comprehensive. I really wanted to share. I had uh, I had the final run through and demonstration of what all the capabilities of the product are. So a lot of people understand uh, that from a from a drone point of view, the videos coming from a drone are often uh, dead ended into the controller, and it's very difficult to share them uh, with the other people involved in the incident, certainly with headquarters, get it back to the real time crime center or a fusion center. So basically, you know, at, at the very simplest, we take all of that video, audio, and allow everybody to share it and allow those videos to be watched and interacted upon by anybody else. But that, you know, at a simple instance, so basically that works for every video feed. It also works for all of the audio feeds. So they're all shared. But what's really interesting about the system and very, very profound is the depth in which it creates an interactive cooperative tool for all the people that are involved in a particular incident. So you can segregate particular groups if, if only SWAT is going to be involved in an incident and they're the only people you want to be able to interact with all of this, you can segregate it to that group and then they all get to communicate with each other. You can add different people from outside, from outside that uh, that group, and if you want to bring extra people on, if you want them to be able to participate, you can choose that. If you want to be able to watch, you can choose that. And this is participation from a from an audio point of view, from a video point of view. If they want to share video video. Uh, 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 camera images in real time, if they want to have a chat feature, a text feature. So all of the elements you would be used to in any communication tool, um, you know, they use, uh, they use WhatsApp a lot, police officers. So it duplicates everything they have there, but it's all on a completely secure and proprietary nature. So nobody can get into, into their communications. Nobody can see what they're saying. Nobody can hear what they're saying. We, we offer abs absolute security and you know proprietary nature of all that information. So this is really profound. And a big part of what we're gonna be going forward with is educating uh, the departments, educating the people using the system in how comprehensive it is. And this is something they've never seen before. So while, while it's easy for us to introduce it into the drone teams, and then the drone teams are using it, and they're relatively easy to train, 
um, with various departments, we've learned when they're doing different types of operations, you know, the drone team may be part of it, but not the coordinating part of it. So when they're doing undercover operations, when they're, you know, when they're uh, going into homes to arrest people when they're serving warrants. All of these things have a different suite of features and all of the coordination cooperation features in the system are integral to that and will give them an assistance and a help that they've never had before. So a big part of what we're going forward with is education of all the features and the depth that we built. And, you know, I have to say, um, the team that put this together, and there are a lot of creative people involved, um, it, it, it is an awesome system with awesome capabilities, and it's really going to provide a tool that first responders, uh, any, any group that's involved in any type of security situation has never had before. So I'm very excited about that. And hopefully you can, you can hear that from my voice because having seen every single element under the covers, um, there, there are so many pieces here that I'm so proud people thought of and developed and made work. Um, this is something I don't think exist anywhere else. In addition to that on Citicoms, there's a product we've been working on for a while called the Uplink product, which basically deals with a lot of issues with DJI drones. And it basically allows uh, through the eye it allows control of the DJI drones. It allows streaming of the capabilities there. It allows us to do a lot of really exciting things with the metadata that's in there. And this is this is a product that is 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 going to be something that first responders need and want to have. And that that really is a, a interesting attached module for the. Um, for the for the drone operators. So again, we're really excited about introducing that product. We haven't talked a lot about it, but it's it's ready for introduction now, and it's got some hidden features in it that I'll, <laughs> that literally the technical team thought of, and uh, they're going to change. It's going to change a lot of things. It's got some features nobody ever believed uh, you could put into something like this. Um, they've taken them directly from some military applications, so I won't I won't spoil a surprise now. But we'll be we'll be announcing that product in the next couple of weeks or so. So that's become a really exciting development from our point of view. And the Citicoms marketplace, we're moving forward uh, with the FirstNet development, um, as you can imagine. Uh, working with FirstNet AT&T is, you know, the mouse and the elephant analogy, but um, our mission is really to show them uh, that our products are something that not only is something that they sell, but is something that adds to everything FirstNet has done. In other words, if you have the IGAN comms product in front of the network, those two work hand in hand doing an awful lot of interesting things. And when you're dealing with carriers, the important thing carriers want to hear is, you know, how how can we uh, expand our network? How, how can we basically do more with the network we have? And we strongly believe that our technologies is something that works hand in hand with them. So these will be ongoing discussions. You'll be seeing us at all of the first net shows and presentations they do from this point forward. And that's going to turn into something, I think, a lot, a lot bigger than what people are imagining, other than us just selling our product through FirstNet. I think there's going to be some very important cooperative marketing, cooperative sales between the two. And our people are really working, working to those discussions now, and those discussions are ongoing. So very, very exciting pieces there at this point. So... All right, let's talk about CETA AeroCorp. Hopefully everybody saw the news release uh, uh, this morning. Um, you know, the name CETA Air has uh, kind of come out in a couple of ways. It's been a working working title we've had and really what CETA Air was, the place where we relegated all kinds of new technologies, new pieces and things that didn't fit strictly under the... Uh, uh, sit a, sit a, 
uh, COM, CIDA CARES, or CIDA COMP model. So for CIDA Air Corp, um, I wanted to introduce everybody to Gary Brown. Um, you can, I've grabbed a copy of what we just put up on the on the website in the last uh, week or so. We're always a little bit behind on that, but um, this is this is the function that Gary serves in CIDA at this point. And you know we've been working together here for the last three months probably. Uh, so again, it's it's a little late making the introduction, but um, a lot of work has been going on behind the scenes. And Gary uh, has worked with CIDA in the past. He's uh, Back oh, 10 years or so ago, he was instrumental in uh, bringing us the MVNO from a uh, facilities-based carrier, of which he was actually the CEO, I believe, at that point of that. He's, and we had that facilities-based carrier because AT&T had turned us down for the MVNO in that our product broke network protocol. And... Gary and I conceptualized that by doing it through a, another facilities-based carrier, but a smaller one, um, AT&T would realize, you know, the error of their way. And actually, he brought AT&T to CIDA. AT&T gave us a full uh, mobile virtual network operator license for remote medical monitoring technology. We were programming our own SIMs. I mean, it was it was just awesome. And uh, they've never done anything like that before. And that was all through Gary's connections with the carriers, which is his expertise. He's a network and carrier uh, expert. He's been at it for most of his life. And he also brought us uh, the project we did with Oracle and Verizon. Um, that was very, very close to acceptance with CIDA Oracle, um, trying to convince Verizon to do something that would have been in their best interest. Um, as uh, in that case, Verizon decided not to quite do that, but uh, we, we sure had an interesting high level presentation there. So from the CIDA Air Corp side, Gary is gonna be coordinating all of the members and all of the people that are coming to the table. So we've got lots of very exciting pieces. Uh, maybe next slide, please. There you go. Um, these are just a couple of uh, you know teaser teaser slides that are are going to become part of uh, part of CIDA Air. So what we uh, what we have is a number of. Um, other companies, technical companies that we're partnering with, you know, Sweetwater is an example. Um, what you're seeing here is another one that we've been partnering with for a while. We haven't made the formal announcements yet, I don't think, but um, they have some incredible technologies. Um, they have developed command and control systems, avionics that they developed out of their expertise while they were at NASA doing all the various things you see here. And so they have, you know, a lot of programming expertise, these avionic systems, they approached us, they wanted to combine our IGAN uh, uh, technology with the command and control systems. And we've been working on a project with them for a couple of months now, revolving around the seeker and that particular airframe, which hasn't quite come to fruition yet, but there's some really exciting things happening there with that project. And that will all be handled under the technical grouping of CIDA Air. So this is kind of an example of the pieces we're going to be putting in there. And it's it's a place where our technologies can be combined with other people's technologies and then moved into various you know, flying solutions, various drone-based solutions. And when there we go. Yes, you, you read my mind, Mike. That was that's good. You're you're getting pretty good at this. Um, actually, I have a buzzer here that gives them a small electric shock when I want the things to change. Anyway, so here's here's a really cool example of two actual drones that are being designed and getting ready for um, for flight. The first one is almost ready for the test flights. This. This is going to become part of uh, CIDA Air as well. And uh, you know, we're going to be doing some really bleeding edge stuff. And the team of people that we have currently 
coming to the table on CITA Air and generally, you know, helping us on the CITA side. We haven't made any announcements of that, but the the technical expertise we have is is certainly world class. And you know, we're just so lucky that all of these people, you know, through through a network of friends and associates, has been open to doing you know, the the basic cooperation agreement with us. And then under that agreement, we designed the projects that we're going to be putting together. So the projects that we're going to be putting together under that agreement will then be operated and designed and developed under our CITA Air moniker. So um, so many exciting things coming down there. And you can tell I'm really excited about it because it's kind of brand new tech and brand new integration and a lot of really clever people here. So again, Gary, Gary will step over onto that side and be the coordinator. Uh, CITA Air is, is a whole, currently a wholly owned subsidiary of CITA and uh, ultimately we'll see how it develops, but, you know, could, could literally become, you know, our second spin out as, as we move forward. So um there's there's a lot of people that are excited about it, and there's a lot of exciting things happen. And the reason we're able to do it now is because we can we can honestly say that the the comms and the cares piece are ready to go to market. You know, the marketing and the the sales of those will sales will be starting probably in in the start of September. Currently, marketing is ongoing. Um, there's a lot of, you know, interesting pieces going out about what we do with CITA comms, what we do with CITA cares. You know, a lot of you have been reading, um, they go out as under our blog category on the CITA website, and then they go out to, you know, my LinkedIn, Natalia's LinkedIn, the rest of the team's LinkedIn. Um, and we've been getting really interesting uh, response to the articles, which are basic articles talking about the areas we work in and discussing various elements. So again, um, if if you have an idea or a thought of something you'd like to see us write about and discuss and talk about it from a general point of view, um, we'd be interested in you know hearing from you on that. So let's move to the next one. There we go. Um, I talked a little bit about CARES earlier. Uh, CARES you know, is a really, really interesting uh, system that we created in conjunction with uh, uh, an idea that came from Sheriff Masternardi from the National Sheriff's Association. Um, it was a, a suggestion that maybe with your technology doing this, you could also help that sheriff protect the, I think he said 200 schools in his jurisdiction, create a system that does that. So we've been working on that diligently for about eight months now, and we're ready to come to market with it. And the system is, it's, it's revolutionary in that you arm the teachers, administrators, whoever in the school wants the app in their phone. If a problem arises, they push the SOS button on their phone. That OS, SOS then sends alert out to all of the first responders that are on the CITICOM system, goes right on their phone, right on their tablet. They simply touch, touch that notification and they're in immediate video audio connection with that particular administrator who sent the alert. They can see what his camera sees. They can hear what what his phone sees, he can tell them exactly why he alerted them and and then turn the camera towards it and show them in real to every police officer in real time what he's seeing. So in any critical situation, somebody with a gun and whatever, you know, we've we've timed it out and it's literally three seconds to have this thing work back and forth and have you know, eyes on that person have complete situational awareness for the police officers. The other part of it is every other person who has the CARES application in their phone will also uh, be able to see and hear that that notification. They'll be participating as well. And then they can actually add their, their camera and video and audio feed by hitting their SOS button. We can see things from many different angles. So this is a game changer in the space. We've talked to a lot of very big people who are involved and everybody's very excited about what we're gonna be able to do with this. 
and we'll be starting to put the system into the beta beta sites uh, very quickly. And from there, um, then we'll go with the national rollout. There are you know, several major partners um, talking to us about this at this point, but it's a little premature for us to do that until we've got the betas there. And uh, in Natalia Sokolova as as a as a mother has really adopted this this has really been her baby and she's going to be front and center on this product making sure it you know the 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 media surrounding it all of the pieces um are done in such a way that you know we're really out there that it's perfect for protecting our children that's that's her mission with regard to this you'll hear a lot more about that um there've been a couple of couple of articles that she's put out talking about that in in our blog um site on the CIDA website so take a look at those if you want to understand kind of what we're doing and how she's coming at it um those are you know those are very very profound pieces and we're just we're just so proud of you know really this you know she's designed it from one end to the other along with the technical people so I'm, I'm just really excited about how this has turned out and how powerful this is going to be from our point of view uh switching over to the next one um CIDACOMP, um not a lot of new news here um Reticulate Micro is moving along their uh, filing path. Uh, their S1 is in. Um, it's, you know, it's it's being, um, oh, responses are being processed by the SEC at this point. Everything that I hear is that everything is going remarkably smoothly there. Uh, from a from a technical filing point of view, of course, you know, the mysteries of the SEC, none of us, you know, can, choose their timing. So it could be relatively quick or it could take another month or so. Um, impossible to predict, but all the indications are it was very well received. Um, there are no, no problems with it. And that should allow them to move to their offering and listing on, uh, on the New York Stock Exchange as a, as a very simple process over the next 45, 60 90 days. So again, really excited about that. Again, you know, CITA's equity interest in reticulate micros is 5.1 million shares. So, um, you know, the, the better, the better they go out to market, the higher they trade, the happier all of us CITA shareholders are uh, about that. So again, uh, you know, we're giving them completely, utterly our full support in anything they need from us. And, that's that's again a very exciting piece. So no CIDA shareholder should ever forget that we have that there. So, you know, having having that equity on our balance sheet at some point in the near future will really change how people look at CIDA. And that's that's just a very, very big piece. And finally, I will go to um, Mike's Mike's favorite subject, uh, Investor Connect AI, which is kind of the the older working title of everything that's being done. Um, uh, it, it really, what Mike has brought to us here is embracing every uh, AI tool that works and works in conjunction with the other pieces. So this is a full suite of. Um, media tools, a full suite of uh, public relations tools, the full suite of uh, investor relations tools, all kinds of uh, pieces. But what it also allows us to do is to take our products and really introduce them to the market. And as you know, as a as a small public company, our big problem is, you know, recognition in the market, uh, having people look at our products, getting it into the right spots and pieces, designing things that are specific to what we do. How do we connect with these people? How do we connect with those people? So what we've been finding is that, you know, this is really something um, that is the future. 
and it's the future, you know, CIDA sees it as the future for us as we move forward. So the pieces that we're building here uh, are probably going to become a big part of everything CIDA does in the future. And that's probably going to mean some type of integration with these technologies in a, in a, in a AI driven portion of what we do. And that will probably entail that we end up with a full AI functionality within CIDA. And, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of <laughs> so probably surprise Mike a little bit here, but you know that will that will involve Mike on the CIDA side, and then you know then uh, you know there's some discussions about whether there's enough time to you know offer these tools to other people. You know we have a we have a number of companies as you can imagine like uh, Reticulate Micro that are that are friends, so you know we would definitely utilize these tools to their benefit and. We'll see whether there's enough time for other people in the marketplace. So things to discuss, but you know, Mike will be learning everything there is to know about the IGAN and our technologies, the hands-on part of it. And given his technical expertise, he'll be involved with the team in that in that manner going forward from this point on. Mike, it sound okay? Yes, you? thank you. <laughs> that okay you're, you're I'm, I'm on board with that kind of yeah. like it's kind of like a proposal in front of a crowd you never know what's going to happen but you're good with that i'm good with that okay <laughs> definitely yeah thank you that's perfect all right um we should see if we have any questions we've got quite a few here so let's get started okay. here i'll get off video here uh first one comes from randy uh, he asks, uh, what are your expectations for the market to catch up with what CIDA has to offer? I know at this point it is speculative, but people who know CIDA believe in it. Uh, well, here, here's, here's, uh, that's actually a really good question right now. And one of the things we're doing right now is not paying any attention to the market. Um, and there's a reason for that. August is traditionally a very bad market month. And... Um, you know, our, let's say the people that are uh, always there for CIDA and always, you know, call them our market makers is what we used to call in the old days, but they're CIDA people that are involved. Um, more than anything else right now, they're on an accumulation mode. Um, you know, we have these discussions. There are some people, you know, recently there are some people, there, there are people that just have to sell their stock for various reasons. So right now we're not trying to move it up. We're not trying to, you know, do any of those tricky market things that mostly don't work anyways. But, you know, so we're sitting here, we're accumulating once after the Labor Day weekend, the process of, combining the market with what's happening in the sales and marketing side of the house, making, making those type of connections and, and working with, you know, getting the realization of our value into the marketplace that will start happening in a bigger way. So uh, we're pretty excited about that. There's lots of normal tools to do that, but some of the, you know, some of the realistic tools are, selling and marketing your product. So for comms and cares, the answer for us is hitting the markets with products, getting sales, getting orders, pulling all of that together. And that 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 happens and that will happen on a continuous basis. And that's been planned and organized here for the last two months. So we're very, very excited about that. That will help the market. And then obviously, um, you know, the other things that we're now going to be doing with CIDA Air, some of the some of the technological pieces that we have and the people we're working with, um, I don't think people are really going to believe it's 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 probably the most exciting group of uh, things and people that I I've, I've ever had the you know the the good good uh, it, results to pull together. So that's going to be very exciting from that point of view. So that combined with comms and cares is going to be exciting, and then ultimately you know, reticulate micros moving along, you know, that juggernaut can't be stopped. The technology there is, you know, 
going, you know, it's paradigm shifting technology, as you know, we already knew, and they're doing an incredible job of bringing it to the marketplace. So even while they're doing all of the regulatory things, the technical team there is awesome. You know, they're, they're really good at what they do. And, you know, they've, they, they've developed it to a level where they're going to be able to sell and market their product in a way that's going to surprise everybody. I mean, I think their capabilities are great. So all of those things have come together, but literally, let's say, you know, the gun starts going off in September for that. In the meantime, you know, uh, the stock is very cheap. This is a good time to accumulate stock from that point of view. I wish I could. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. All right. Next question. How will you differentiate IGAN on FirstNet from the other certified or verified products sales-wise? Oh, yeah. That's That kind of goes to what I was talking about before. The rest of their products are toys. <laughs> We're the foundational technology that FirstNet needs to move forward. Uh, it's that big. So, Everything FirstNet does with first responders will have the AT&T FirstNet network uh, right backing backing our IGAN technology, our, our comms technology. So those two go together hand in hand. So what we do is we give them the ability to put more phones in the market, put, you know, networks, carriers want to know all about that. So we give them a capability that they don't have now. Other things they sell are just kind of toys that do this and this. We're what I would call a foundational technology. Uh, Gary Brown is working on that part of our project. Um, you know, we're on it this morning. And really the basic bottom line is we need to show them how this will, this will be a billion dollar product for them in their market and ultimately show them how the integration of our technology will add to their dynamic and get them excited about that. So that's that's what's going to happen there. Thanks, Gary. Uh, next question. Do you see CIDA as a potential takeover or buyout target given the many partnerships, et cetera? Yes, I do. And um you know, that's something, you know, there, there's, there's areas we're talking about, and I won't go into which ones at this point, but there's, there's interest now, and particularly now that we say we're coming to market, we, we wouldn't talk to them really before, but now that we're coming to market with the various pieces, yes, there's interest. Um, will it be CIDA as a whole? You know, that's something we're talking about, or will it be, you know, licensing major pieces to major players. Um, it depends on what their appetite is, but there's certainly appetite and interest at this point. And as we show them what we're capable of doing, uh, I think I think we'll see a partnering or something along those lines from somebody major, yes, within the next year. Thanks, Gary. All right. We, um... It is twelve thirty, but if you have a few more minutes, Gary, we've got several more questions here. We can hit a couple hey, more. Hey, this okay. this is the most exciting part of my life. Okay. Don't, don't don't try to cut my time. All off. right, well, we'll go as long as you want. The, this next question here, uh, this is a good one here. How does uh, how does CIDA keep developing such cutting edge technologies? Um, well, the best part is we we don't, um, but a lot of really. CIDA, you know, has it got into this, we got our technology from the DOD uh, through, uh, you know, Bill Castleman, who had all those connections, who literally was the originating partner in CIDA with me. Um, wonderful, wonderful man. Um, you know, he died, unfortunately, about three years ago, a very aggressive form of cancer. But it, when we when we were doing the meetings in Washington, D.C., you know, going into the various, you know, named people's offices, that was with our remote medical monitoring. He took us to the Future Warrior Project. So, you know, we got to go on, you know, various military bases and do all kinds of cool stuff on those type of things. So it wasn't just a remote medical monitoring technology we had. You know, we were participating on the military and the defense side. So he brought that whole side to the house. Um, he again, you know, so what they he, he 
realized was sometimes there are technologies where the people they're working with are a little bit quirky, a little bit weird, or, you know, just downright, you know, genius level nuts. So um, <laughs> SIDA kind of got a reputation that, you know, we were able to deal with them and bring them along. And, you know, that's how, that's how we got our, our super compression technology, because we were the only people that uh, the developers there would sign a contract with. And, you know, that got us that technology. Following on that, there've been other, other people who've come to the table and there are a couple other technologies we haven't talked about for a while that are percolating percolating along in the background. Um, so we kind of needed a home for them. So, and we've been working with them for a long time. And then literally um, our other, other people were happy to talk to various people at shows, you know, people who had incredible technologies. And, you know, often you find genius level people wandering around with things and they don't know how to monetize it or they don't know how to productize it. So we're pretty good at that. And, you know, we treat it on a benign basis. You know, everybody else wants to steal their technology from them. Um, we want to work with them and cooperate with them. So that's been our philosophy. Our cooperation agreement is, you know, is relatively well known in industry right now. And, you know, the various groups we've, we've got signing it, bringing various technologies. You saw a couple that we haven't quite into, announced yet that, you know, will be coming in and we've come part of that. So, um, you know, we like them and they kind of like us and, you know, we've, we've got a way to move them, you know, from their small company status, move them up a little bit um, rather than what they normally find is, you know, some big dollars come in and then squeeze them out. So we, we stay cooperative and, you know, we, we try to work with everybody. So that's kind of the philosophy. Thanks, Gary. Okay. Uh, next question here. Are there any partnerships or collaborations in the pipeline to accelerate Cita Air's market penetration? Wow. Um, absolutely, utterly, definitely. Um, you know, the several, several of the groups, we are right at the stage of moving from the cooperation agreement to the partnering agreement. We think we're going to use that format. It's a little bit loose at this point. Um, as you saw, there's that whole avionics piece, which is so cool, given what they did and who they work with. You know, again, they're a NASA prime contractor. They work there. You saw some of the projects that they did. So it's that group that we're dealing with here and adapting those type of command and control avionics packages adding it into the IGAN package, which is what the ongoing discussions have been. And like I say, um, we're still waiting for some confirmation on what that looks like with the seeker airframe, which is complicated because it's made in China. So, you know, there, there's a lot of elements to that one. But uh, as you saw, there were a couple of other airframes there, uh, one of which is ready for, um, the, the first round of testing, air testing, and, you know, that will have command and control combined with IGAN built into it and um, that type of thing. So, yes, those are all ongoing contracts. Okay, the next question. Uh, what is the rollout timeline for Citicares? Uh, I would say start of September, uh, after Labor Day. Um, the... There's there's a whole, as you can imagine, there's a sales and marketing program for comms, um, which is, you know, really starting. Uh, but the CARES program will be going into the their betas first um, in conjunction with with our some of our comms installations. And, you know, but the the rollout on that is going to be very concurrent because it, you know, it already works. It's working with, you know, our existing products. We know the market. We have the, you know, we have a skill set in this particular area, unlike anybody else. So um, I'm thinking the first, first week of uh, September. Okay, great. Well, that is about all the questions we had for today. Um, any, any closing remarks, Gary, before we, before we wrap up? 
Yeah, no, it's uh, it's each week it's getting a little more difficult to pick and choose the things we're going to talk about. So, uh, you know, I'm sorry if I'm going long here, but, uh, you know, this is this is really interesting. As I say, any of you listening and but you know anybody, you know, a lot of you have been sending us, you know, some really interesting information. What about this? We came across this with our school system, this company, that company please continue to send us that because, you know, if you're in a, say, particular school district and you know it, you know, that gives us a way to, you know, look at maybe that's a place where we're going to introduce something. So most of these things are really hands-on. So don't think anything's too small. Any thoughts you have, you know, I love, love to get the information because, you know, your guys are like a a, a group of people sending us interesting things and we've gotten a lot so continue to do that anything you might be interesting nothing's too big nothing's too small and appreciate that and thanks for your time everybody see you thank next you week. gary thanks so much and i just remind everybody too to don't forget to check the city court blog where uh, natalia and gary are putting out some great some great material so uh, check that out <laughs> thanks gary we'll see you next thank week you. thanks everyone okay bye bye, -bye.